now talk about uh, the photoelectric effect. Okay. And this is one experiment that led to the notion of light as consisting of particles. Okay, so this is one uh, observation that can be explained by thinking of light as uh, a stream of particles, which we call photons, rather than as a wave. Okay. So, uh, the photoelectric effect, here are the facts about the photoelectric effect. If you shine light on a piece of metal, you can cause electrons to eject from the metal. Okay, so the electrons that are ejected from the metal would be what you would call photoelectrons. So here you have light hitting a metal called the emitter here because that's where the electrons can come off. You can collect the electrons on the other side. So I have another piece of metal here, a collector. So electrons travel there. And so the way you would know that electrons are being ejected is that there's going to be a current. Okay, so there's going to be a flow of electrons. Notice that the uh, direction of the current, the conventional current, is opposite the flow of the direction of the electrons. But the idea is you're going to get electrons. You're going to get a current if there are electrons ejected. Okay. Now, uh, to measure the kinetic, now there's going to be a range of possible kinetic energies for the electrons that are ejected. Now, if you want to stop the flow of electrons with the circuit, okay, so if you want to prevent the electrons from reaching the collector, what you do is you would apply a negative voltage over here on the collector. Okay, so that negative voltage on the collector is going to repel the electrons, okay? And so the minimum voltage you're going to need, the most, the smallest negative voltage you're going to need to stop the electrons from reaching the collector, that will stop the most energetic of those photoelectrons, okay? So if, if negative X volts is required to stop the current, okay, then you say that X electron volts is the kinetic energy of the most, fo most energetic photoelectrons coming off that circuit. So that's the maximum kinetic energy from the surface for that particular wavelength of light that you're using. Okay, so if what would be the kinetic energy of the photoelectron if you require an opposing voltage of negative 0.5 volts? Then that would be 0.5 volts. 0.5, this would be 0.5 electron volts, which in joules would be 0.5 times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules because an electron volt is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So how fast would those electrons be moving? So that would be the kinetic energy of the electron, right? Can you solve for the maximum speed of the electrons? What's the formula for kinetic energy? One half mass times the square of the speed so you can you can solve for the speed it's two times the kinetic energy max over the mass and then you take the square okay so that's how you would calculate the speed of the electrons that as they are ejected from the from the emitter Okay, now the negative voltage is going to slow them down so that they won't able they won't be able to complete the circuit. They're going to barely make it to the end, and they're going to be turned around. Okay, so uh, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. What's the anomaly here in this particular experiment? It turns out that the maximum kinetic energy of, elect of the electrons that are ejected depend on the frequency, but not of the intensity. So what's so anomalous about this observation is that, in, remember, in the wave model, what did we say the intensity was uh, a measure of? Okay, intensity for, for one thing, intensity is energy, right? Transported per unit time, per unit time, per unit area, right? So energy per unit time is watts per unit area, that's joules per second and area square meters. So um, so you would think that the more intense you make the radiation, you're putting in more energy, you should be able to knock off more electrons and get them to move faster, right? But it turns out in some cases, in, 
if you are below a minimum frequency, that's called the threshold frequency, you can't get any electrons out regardless of how intense you make the radiation. So how could it be you're making the radiation give you as much energy as possible, but you can't knock out any of the electrons? Okay? But if you have the right frequency, if you're above this minimum frequency, it doesn't matter how weak the light is. How, how is the intensity doesn't matter. The kinetic, it, it doesn't affect what the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons is. Okay? So anyway, H times the, uh, the special frequency here, nu, so nu, nu naught, is, called, is now what we would call your work function. And we're going to uh, understand later why it's called the work function. But what makes this anomalous is that instead of the kinetic energy of the electrons depending on intensity, it actually depends on the frequency. In fact, the higher the frequency, the higher the kinetic energy of the electrons. Okay. So if the frequency is higher than the threshold frequency, okay, you just simply get more electrons ejected at higher intensity. But the kinetic energy is not dependent on intensity. So for a particular frequency, let's say for a particular frequency, you can get electrons to come off. Okay. It doesn't matter how intense you make the beam. Okay. It doesn't matter, matter how intense you make the light the kinetic energy doesn't depend on the intensity. It only depends on the frequency, okay? What intensity does is just gives you more electrons. So it increases the current through your circuit, but it increases the number of electrons ejected, but it does not affect the kinetic energy of the electrons, okay? In fact, if you were to plot the kinetic energy versus frequency, this is what you'll find, the equation, okay? is given by this uh, right here, Oops. expression right here. So if you plot kinetic energy versus frequency, you're going to get a straight line. So there's a minimum frequency that you need to get electrons to eject. So let's call that nu naught. That's a threshold frequency. And you're going to get a straight line if you make a plot of kinetic energy max Okay, I'm just going to start dropping the max, okay, what I mean, so it's, when I just write KE here, I mean the maximum. You're going to get a straight line, and so if you fit that uh, those data points to a straight line, your data would have a slope of equal to H, okay? And the y-intercept would be negative H nu naught, okay? In fact, when the kinetic energy is zero, what happens? What happens when Ke max is zero? When zero is equal to h nu minus h nu naught, then nu is equal to nu naught, right? So your x-intercept right here, okay, at nu naught, kinetic energy max is zero. Below that, you're, so this uh, section right here, that's not observable because this is the minimum energy right here, minimum frequency right there that you need to get electrons off your man. And it turns out this slope of the line, you can see this is y equals mx plus b, see? So the slope of your line is h, okay? Your x, this is your x-axis, so what kinetic energy is on your y-axis and your y-intercept, that your b is negative h nu naught. Now, like I said, uh, it, it's a straight line, and the slope turns out to be the same H, the same value that Planck got when he tried to fit the black body radiation. Same constant came up. Two completely different experiments. Same constant came up. Okay, that suggested that what that H, Planck's constant, is, is in fact a universal constant. It's not just applicable to one particular situation. Okay, so the slope of the line that they got, they would get different plots for different metals. Okay, so depending on what the metal is, you have a different threshold frequency. But all of these lines are going to have the same slope. They all have the slope equal to H. And that value of H is the same. All right? It's called the work function. Okay, it's called the work function, and we represent that with the letter phi. All right, 
So what would be your plot of, if you had experimental data, if you were to plot it versus wavelength, what would it be? What would your plot look like? Kinetic energy maximum versus lambda. Instead of a straight line sloping forward, what do you get? You're going to have instead a maximum wavelength, right? Threshold wavelength, which is going to be HC over, uh, it's going to be equal to C over the threshold frequency. And is it going to be straight? No, it's going to be a curve. It's going to look like that, right? So you have higher kinetic energy for lower, for shorter wavelengths, that's higher frequency. You have higher kinetic energy for the electron. All right. So what's the explanation for this anomaly? The way you explain this is by saying, well, since intensity it doesn't depend, the kinetic energy of the electrons don't depend on intensity, then Einstein said, let's imagine light as a stream of photons instead so that each photon carries an energy equal to h nu. Okay? Then you say, for a given piece of metal, there's going to be a minimum energy that you need that a photon must carry in order to, for it to dislodge an electron. In other words, if you have an electron on the surface of your metal, a photon, okay, interacts with one electron Okay. And if that photon's energy is higher than what's needed to eject the electron, so there's a minimum energy that a photon must have to eject an electron from the piece of metal. So if that is higher, if H nu is higher than H nu naught, okay, H nu naught, we said, remember, we said it's the work function. If it's higher than energy needed to knock out one electron from the surface, then you can get the electron to come out. If H nu is less than h nu naught is less than the work function, then it's not going to come up. It's like saying, if I were to pass a bullet at the wall, okay, I won't be able to give that bullet enough kinetic energy to knock off a piece from the wall, right? That would be what you would call a low energy photon. Okay, that would be the analogy. But if I fire that bullet from a gun, I can knock off a piece of the wall with that bullet. That would be a high energy photon. So in other words, Einstein was saying that it must be this high frequency radiation must consist of photons that are very energetic. And that's what we said before when we talked about it. So we're not looking at it in hindsight. Uh, but that's how the idea of frequency being related to uh, photon energy came about. It's to explain the photoelectric effect. It's in fact for this work that Einstein got his Nobel Prize for his work on the photoelectric effect, not for relativity, okay? So there's a minimum energy needed to dislodge an electron from the surface. If the energy of the photon is less than phi, it's less than the work function, your photon cannot dislodge an electron. If it's higher than phi, it's more energetic than the photoelectron. It will dislodge the electron. So what's the difference between H nu and phi? Photon energy minus the energy needed to remove the electron, the remainder becomes kinetic energy of the photoelectron. So let's say this thing has five electron volts, okay? Think of the work function as the bail to get the electron out of jail. Okay, so let's say your uh, work function is three electron volts. Well, a photon comes along, hey, I've got five electron volts. Here, take the three so I can get you out of jail. And so the electron leaves, how much energy does the electron have after that? Two electron volts will be the kinetic energy of the electron. So think of the work function as the cost of the ticket out of jail. If you imagine the piece of metal as the jail for the electron. Okay? And so the photon must provide at least that much energy and whatever extra comes, uh, whatever extra energy the photon has becomes kinetic energy of the electron. Okay, and higher intensity simply means that you have more photons, okay, and so you get more electrons ejected, but a higher intensity will not give you more energetic electrons. So the energy of the electron depends only on the frequency, okay, which dictates what the, the energy, what tells you what the energy of the photon is, okay. So intensity it's related to energy in the sense that if you have something that is more intense, you simply have more photons. 
it's the frequency that determines the energy of each photon. Okay, so you might say that a million ping pong balls uh, might have the same energy as one bullet. Okay, but this million ping pong balls you aim at the wall are not just, are not gonna get anything to come off the wall, but that one bullet can knock off a piece of the wall. So it's all concentrated in that one little particle of the energy. All right, so uh, let's do some sample calculations here. A 300 nanometer radiation has a photon energy of 4.134 electron volts. Aluminum has a work function phi of 4.08 electron volts. What happens if we shine light at 300 nanometers on a piece of aluminum metal? So you have light, 300 nanometers. So what's the photon energy? H nu, you remember how to calculate photon energy? H nu is the same thing as Hc over lambda, all right? So if you plug in 300 nanometers for lambda, you're going to get 4.134 electron volts. Okay. Will you be able to get an electron off your surface? Yes. Um, what would be the kinetic energy of the electron? Maximum would be 4.134 minus 4.08 electron volts and that gives you 0.054 electron volts. Sorry, yeah. Oh, okay, you need time to write it down. Alright, so will photoelectrons be ejected if we shine 300 nanometers on a metal that has a work function of 4.5 electron volts? Okay, uh, what's the photon energy for this? H nu for this, H C over lambda is possible for how much? 4.134 electron volts. So if the work function is 4.5, no electron. You can't get any electron. Off, okay? So and that's the photoelectric effect. That's a quick one. Uh, here's some YouTube videos that uh, you might find useful here. Okay, and a simulation at the University of Colorado is also a very nice uh, site to ex explore. Actually, we're going to do this in the lab. Okay, so useful chemistry, photoelectric effect. Where is photoelectric effect? Uh, you see it right here. Here's a more. Okay, so here's a simulation. You can change the wavelength. So let's try uh, let's try 800 nanometers, a very low wavelength. 800 nanometers. Okay, this is sodium. Okay, so here's your emitter right here. So electrons are going to come off from here, and here's your collector over here. Okay, and so if I'm going, so right now I don't have any voltage on those two, but Electrons get ejected. It's going to be. Uh, they're going to just. They're just going to move across. Okay. So now I'm going to have 800 nanometers. Look what happens. I'm going to shine on it. Doesn't matter how intense I make it. I can't get anything. Okay. I'm bringing down my intensity. And instead of 800 nanometers, let's try uh, 400 nanometers. See if we can get something going. I uh, can get a little bit going. Okay. And then if you increase the, the intensity, you simply get more electrons. And you get a bigger current right there. And how do you measure, let's say, at 400 nanometers, what's the maximum kinetic energy of these 
these electrons. Notice these electrons will have different kinetic there's a distribution of kinetic energies. Some electrons will require more to get out of the surface. Right? So what's the minimum energy needed to prevent these electrons from making it to the other side? What you do is you adjust your voltage over here. Oops. Something happened to the simulation. Let's try that. Okay, yeah. The lower the wavelength, the less, the more energetic the electrons are. Okay, let me see. Uh, I think I need to reload this. Huh? Oh, play. So you can see it's now being, by, by making the, the, the voltage negative, okay, it's repelling the electrons. So the electrons are still going to be ejected, but then uh, because of the negative charge on, this, uh, on the collector, the electrons are going to be repelled, so they can only make it this far. So to determine what's the maximum kinetic energy of the electron at this wavelength, which is 400 nanometers, what I need to do is find the minimum negative the minimum opposing voltage, okay, the least negative opposing voltage that will just barely keep the electrons from making it. So I can try negative 0.5. They can still make it? No, they can't make it anymore. Are there still some that make it? Okay, so, so you play a pricing game here. This is like prices, right? You can can change the voltage until you don't get a current anymore okay and so you can try that for different metals we're gonna uh, do that in the lab and we'll try to use that to determine the work function for different pieces of metal. So you have to calculate this I mean yeah these are very realistic simulations so you can play with it I mean, what do you mean? Like the minimum of no, this is this is all experimental. Okay. okay, you get different work functions for different metals, but when you plot kinetic energy versus weight frequency, you'll find they're all going to be straight lines and they're all going to be parallel lines. They all have the same slope, and that slope turns out to be h, the same constant, same value for h is obtained as the h that Planck got for the black body radiation. Okay. So we cannot calculate minimum. No, it's a characteristic right. of the metal. It's a it's a property of the metal. Can I calculate the max? The maximum. Can I yeah, because that would be energy of the photon minus the work function of the metal. Okay. And then it, this, if you do a search for Colorado, that you do quant physics two thousand quantum zone for the electric effect. That's a very nice website also. Colorado.edu physics 2000 for the electric effect. There it is. I found it. Quantum zone. This is a very nice uh, layman's description of the photoelectric effect. It's in a conversational tone. So uh, that might be something you want to read. Okay. Talks about photons and stuff. And there's an article here at nobelprize.org about the Nobel Prize that Einstein won for the, his work on the photoelectric effect. Okay. And if you want a more rigorous description of the photoelectric effect, that Georgia State site, Hyperphysics. Hyperphysics, Georgia State, photoelectric effect. Just do a search for that, and you should be able to find there. There's the data for uh, which one is this? Sodium, I think. Yeah, this is for sodium. Okay. So, so examples. 
and you should be able to find um, so the description of the photoelectric effect and you should be able to get some literature values here for the work functions. All right, so that is the photoelectric 